Hello, friends, and welcome to this week's episode of Learning for Good. Now, this month, we are focused on creating connection in the virtual or hybrid environment. So I'm really excited for this week's episode, three must-haves in any virtual training. Over the last two years or so, organizations have been using virtual training platforms more and more. But what they found is that virtual training is very different than in-person training. So in today's episode, we're going to learn three things that you must have in any virtual training. Let's dive in to today's episode of Learning for Good. Now, the first must have in any virtual training is intentionality. Think first about your organization's needs. What do you want to accomplish through this virtual training? And how does that support your organization? Then consider your audience's needs, the people that will participate in your training. What do they already know how to do? What skills might they need to develop? What might be lacking? What might be a gap for them? And what motivates them to do those things? Right? So you have your organization's needs and you have your audience's needs. Then imagine how you can use the virtual classroom to help the audience practice those skills that you identified. Can we use scenarios or breakout group discussions? Is it better to use a poll? Use the chat box? What can you use that will give the staff, your audience, the opportunity to see themselves in the content, to reflect on what they already know because they're bringing their own experiences and expertise to the virtual room. What will allow them to learn from each other? And what will allow them to practice those new skills that they need in a safe environment? Whatever comes to mind, those are the things that we need to use in the virtual classroom. It comes with intentionality. So when I say be intentional, I mean be intentional with what you create and how you create it. This will keep the virtual training relevant and meaningful for your staff and for your organization. So intentionality is the first must have. The second must have is something that I talk about a lot. But I found that it's important to the success of almost anything we do in our organizations. That's why the second must have in any virtual training is trust. Your staff need to believe that what you want is what's best for them and that the virtual training will benefit them. There's a reason to attend, there's a reason to participate. If they walk into that virtual room thinking it's gonna be a waste of time, you have very little time to change their mind, to prove them wrong before they mentally check out of that virtual training. Build trust from the beginning. How can you do that? How can you build trust? Let people know what to expect. 
tell them how the training will benefit them in their role, in their career. Facilitate relationship building among the participants so that they're establishing trust with each other and they're growing their network. So it's about building trust in the training. It's about building trust in the environment. It's about building trust among the participants. How do we do that, right? We tell them what to expect. We help them understand how it's gonna benefit them in their role, in their career. We facilitate that relationship building and we listen to them. Your staff have value. They have past experiences. They have expertise. And you're saying, yes, 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 they do. We can give them a chance to share that in the virtual space. And that's incredibly meaningful. Trust is essential to everything we do. And it's essential to virtual training. All right. So we have intentionality. We have trust. What's the third must have in any virtual training? Can you guess it? Here's the hard truth. Most people have experienced bad virtual training, boring webinars, pointless virtual meetings. They've had a lot of bad virtual experiences. They are not likely entering your virtual classroom ready to be wowed. And that's why the third must have is the unexpected. Intentionality, trust, and the unexpected. Make the virtual training fun. People remember what is unique, what is uncommon, not the norm. Too often, we join a virtual training only to be met with a talking head instructor who's presenting information to us. And while there are some amazing presenters that can just capture the attention of the audience, it takes expert level skill to draw someone in based on your voice alone. So if you want people to remember what they learn and then be able to apply what they remember, it's time to do the unexpected. So here are things that you can try in your next virtual space. Use an improv activity. Improv in the virtual classroom. It may not seem like it makes sense because it's unexpected. Yes and is an easy, low barrier improv activity that can be used in the virtual room. Ask participants to imagine a scenario that they've encountered. And the first person will share a description of what happened in that scenario. One statement to describe what was happening. And then the next person jumps in and says, yes, and and then they add a descriptor to that scenario. And it continues on and on for as many volunteers as you'd like to include. It's a great way to capture people's attention and use the unexpected. Plus you're allowing them to draw on their experiences, on their past. They feel part of the training. Another thing you can do is Try out a Kahoot game. This brings an element of friendly competition to the room. You can use these quiz style games to introduce a new concept without having to lecture, to refresh their memory from past concepts, or even as a knowledge check after concepts are introduced. It's fun. It's unexpected. It's a great way to engage 
your learners, your participants, your staff without lecture. Another way to create the unexpected is to give your staff permission to turn their video off. We spend a lot of time these days in virtual meetings with our videos on. We see our face in the square over and over and over again. And Zoom fatigue is real. Allow participants to turn their videos on or off based on what you are doing in the virtual room. Maybe it's on for a small group discussion because you want them to see each other and interact with each other and build those relationships. Maybe it's off if you have a PowerPoint slide or a website that you're sharing. Maybe it's on for those improv activities. But maybe it's off when you're using a third party platform like Kahoot. You're giving participants a break, showing respect for their needs and keeping it interesting. Okay, I have one more thing to share. I know, I know, I said three must-haves and we've already talked about all three, but there's one more thing to consider and that's good facilitation. Once you've designed an amazing virtual training, you still need good facilitation to be successful. That's why I created my free virtual facilitation formula. This formula will help your facilitators reduce the awkward silence of the virtual room. Have you ever asked a question in the virtual room only, only to be met with crickets? We can reduce that awkward silence with the tips in the virtual facilitation formula. It'll help your facilitators read the virtual audience more effectively, ask the right kinds of questions to easily engage your participants and leverage the technology for more interaction. So I'm gonna drop a link to the virtual facilitation formula in the show notes. Check it out if you are looking to improve the skills of your facilitators. We want good training design and we want good training facilitation. Just remember, good virtual training can be done, no matter what your experience may have been in the past. It takes intentionality, trust, and the unexpected, plus good facilitation. If you're ready to create custom training for your nonprofit, but are struggling with how to do it virtually, head over to my website and let's work together to develop the skills that your people need so you can scale your mission and impact even in a virtual world.